Hello friends and welcome to another Nostalgia Talk bonus. So the other day, while I was at Shoppers Drug Mart, I found this, a People magazine celebrating the 90s. And the first thing I thought was, oh wow, that's cool, a uh, People magazine, you know, talking about everything from the 90s, but it's actually specific to the year 1997. And I thought, well that's interesting, so I bought it, and uh, now I'm gonna have a look through it. So let's start with the cover, of course, there's basically a lot of things that were really popular at the time, like the movie Titanic, it says right here, Titanic at 25, um, uh, the movies, TV, and music we love, boy bands, girl power, Harry Potter, and more, that's what it says on here, and I can see the Spice Girls and South Park, so uh, let's have a look. I probably won't get through everything in the magazine, but uh, I'll probably get through quite a lot of it. So let's begin. It's just kind of like an intro here. Oh, this is neat. So this is basically a lot of the, I don't know if it's all, but quite a few of the People magazines that came out in the year 1997. I'll just show them right there. like some pictures of celebrities here like celebrity benefits I guess there's Fran Drescher who was in that show The Nanny at the time oh I like this one uh, Ben Affleck and Matt Damon who are in the movie Goodwill Hunting together. That that's a great film. I'm just reading some of these here. I realize that this is a little bit boring. Oh, wow, look that's Scarlett Johansson. Wow. Almost didn't recognize her. There's the Olsen twins, Mary Kate and Ashley Olsen. I have a really hard time telling which one of them's which. Like there's Katie Holmes and Christina Ricci. Ah, now we're in uh, movie magic. So basically films from 1997. And of course, one of the big ones here is Titanic. And there's Celine Dion, who of course had that great song in Titanic, uh, My Heart Will Go On. And I'm a really big Celine Dion fan. I actually have seen Titanic before. It, it is a very sad movie, also a very long movie. Uh, very historical, though. Oh, this is interesting. Celine Dion rocked a 171 carat Heart of the Ocean necklace when she performed Titanic's theme, My Heart Will Go On, at the 1988 Oscars. Fans still want to know, why did Rose, Kate Linslet's character, let Jack die instead of saving him? Actually, yeah, I wonder that too. Men in Black and Lost World, which is one of the Jurassic Park movies right here. I just saw the latest Jurassic Park movie and it was pretty cool. Austin Powers! There's one of my very favorite uh, films in the 90s, Liar Liar with Jim Carrey. I was just watching that uh, the other night. It's definitely a very funny movie. So a couple of horror movies here, such as I Know What You Did Last Summer and Scream 2. Not really a big horror fan, but classics. Romy and Michelle's High School Reunion. And there's the, and there's the one I mentioned earlier, Good Will Hunting. If any of you guys haven't seen Good Will Hunting, check it out. It's such a great film. How do you like them apples? <laughs> Let's continue. Well, now we're into uh, the TV category. And if I'm not mistaken, yeah, this is what I thought it was. Buffy the Vampire Slayer with Sarah Michelle Geller. Hope I said that right. Yeah, 
you know, there's a lot of there's a lot of pictures here of uh, of Buffy. South Park. South Park was done in 1997. Wow. And it's still going. It's still going. It's become quite successful. I've watched it a couple of times. King of the Hill. I do like King of the Hill also. I found King of the Hill very funny. Ah, the old Ellen TV show. The X-Files. Ooh, top five shows of 1997. I'll actually read this so that way it's not just me boring the crap out of you by just looking through it and just briefly showing pictures of it. I'll actually read this one. Uh, top five shows of 1997. Number one, Seinfeld. In their ninth and last season, Jerry, Elaine, George, and Kramer introduced us to the Muffin Top Only Bakery and the Grumpy Auntie Holiday Festivus. I, I still, around Christmas time, I always say Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, Festivus, Happy Holidays, whatever it is you celebrate. I, I, I don't know if you've noticed, but I've even said it on here. Like, I've even said it a couple of times before. Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, Festivus, whatever you celebrate. I have used that here before. Anyway, let's continue. Number two is ER. The inner life of an emergency room with rich fodder for heart-stopping plots. Veronica's Closet. Ooh! I, I, don't, I don't know if any of you guys have watched Veronica's Closet, but I, I like that show. With Seinfeld as a lead-in, the Kirstie Alley series debuted in September. With Alley as the larger-than-life owner of a lingerie company, a la Victoria's Secret. Number four is Friends. Ross and Rachel were on a break, but fans weren't. Millions turned in to see Joey put Chandler in a timeout for kissing his girlfriend. I don't remember that one. <laughs> Touched by an angel. Lim Limbosted... I hope I said that right. Lambosted by critics, loved by fans, the show featured earnest angels roaming the world in a vintage Cadillac, imparting heartfelt messages from God. Oh, now we're on to music. And anybody know who these great gals are? The Spice Girls. The Spice Girls took on boy bands, a newly single Mariah Carey spread her wings in Butterfly, and four teens from Houston had their first hit. It, it actually says who uh, they're referring to, four teens from Houston. What do you guys think? I'm gonna get to that eventually, but who do you guys think they are? And now there's a whole page here on the Spice Girls. Wow, a lot of these are pretty cool. Spice merch was everywhere, including the London department store Selfridges, which had a hefty inventory of Spice Girls dolls. Okay, I think that's what this one is. It's a really cool picture there. Boy bands. Now, as you probably know, one of my very favorite bands is the Backstreet Boys. I also really like 98 Degrees in Sync. Uh, I like New Kids on the Block, LFO. Uh, now there's a whole page on boy bands. I, I hardly use the term boy band anymore, but that, that, that's what they are. There's Backstreet Boys, Boys to Men, and Sync, and right there is Hanson. Anybody remember Hanson? You know they had that song. It's funny that I uh, was in Moncton not too long ago, and that song was playing where I was. And I often get told that I look like Hanson. What do you guys think? They came from Orlando, and they came with a dream, or rather two dreams, to lodge their silky bubblegum harmonies into the recesses of our brain's collective pleasure centers and to get their faces and bods plastered on the bedroom walls of America's teenage girls. They were the Backstreet Boys and NSYNC, an unstoppable two-headed behemoth from Central Florida. And like other boy bands with hits in 1997, Hanson with the, uh, <clears throat> with the earworm Mbop and Boys to Men with the R&B smash Four Seasons of Loneliness, they were proof positive of the decade's addiction to adolescent male 
pheromones and catchy pop hooks. And right here, is stuff about No Doubt, which is Gwen Stefani's band, and the song I'll Be Missing You, which is Sean Combs or Puff Daddy and Faith Ev Evans doing their uh, tribute song for uh, Notorious B.I.G. And it says here, top five songs of 1997. Candle in the Wind, Something About the Way You Look Tonight. Elton John retooled his 1974 hit about Marilyn Monroe into Goodbye England's Rose for his friend, the late Princess Diana. You Were Meant For Me, the reissue of Jewel's 1995 song along with Foolish Game from the Batman and Robin soundtrack, spent 65 weeks in the top 100, a record at the time. I'll Be Missing You, which I just mentioned earlier. The Sean Puff Daddy Combs Faith Evans tribute to Biggie sold 4 million copies in 1997. Unbreak My Heart, the power ballad won Tony Braxton a Grammy for Best Female Pop Vocal Performance. And the last one is Can't Nobody Hold Me Down. Puff Daddy's debut single as a performer, debut single, wow, featured rapper Mace and spent six weeks at number one. And there's Missy Elliott and Radiohead and Leanne Rhymes. Ooh, I do love Leanne Rhymes. Oh, that's a cool picture of Radiohead. 14-year-old Leanne Rhymes took home two Grammys. Holy sh! That's amazing! Two Grammys at 14, that's incredible. By 11, had recorded her first full-length album. Wow. That's amazing. There's a piece here about Janet Jackson, The Velvet Rope. And now, here's the answer to the question, who are the four teens from Houston? Destiny's Child, who released their very first ever single in 1997. They were four talented 16-year-old girls from Houston. Beyonce Knowles, Latoya Luckett, Latavia, I hope I, again, I hope I said that right, Roberson and Kelly Rowland, they'd cycled through names, including Girls' Time, Something Fresh, Cliché and the Dolls, and Lost on Star, Star Search to a since-forgotten rock band. But after years of performing, the teens, by then known as Destiny's Child, landed a recording deal. Their single, No No No, was released on October 27, 1997, and the quartet were on their way to becoming one of the best-selling girl groups of all time. And a band I really love. And here they are on Mariah Carey. Coming on the heels of Mariah Carey's split from husband and manager Tommy Mottola, the album Butterfly was clearly intended as a declaration of the pop diva's independence. Sarah McLaughlin. Oh, interesting fact. Sarah McLaughlin is actually from here, Halifax, Nova Scotia, and is actually good friends with my aunt who lives out west. And I think Sarah McLaughlin does too. I, I really like Sarah McLaughlin. She has a very nice voice. And there's Paula Cole. If anybody doesn't know who Paula Cole is, she did the theme song for Dawson's Creek. Remember, I don't want to wait for our lives to be over. I hear that song sometimes when I'm in malls. There's Jewel. I'm gonna be honest, I don't really know who some of these singers are. Erica Badu. I do like Erica Badu. Fashion. Now, fashion is something I don't really pay that much attention to. But I, being a media person, you know, there are a lot of celebrities that I really am big into, so maybe I'll go through this one. Jennifer Lopez. Nicole Kidman. There's Sandra O. Oh, Tony Braxton. Courtney Cox from Friends. 
Courtney Love. Um, if you guys don't know who Courtney Love is, she was uh, Kurt Cobain's wife. Kurt Cobain was the lead singer of the band Nirvana. Winona Ryder. Cindy Crawford, Fran Drescher, Carmen Electra. It's Alicia Silverstone, Sarah Jessica Parker, Halle Berry. There's Gwen Stefani again. Tyra Banks. It says here, in the winter of 97, Tyra Banks became the first black model to appear solo on the cover of Sports Illustrated's famed swimsuit issue. Uh, she says, it changed my life overnight. And there's Tyra Banks right there. Now this is stuff that's in the news and right away the first thing they're showing is um, the passing of Princess Diana. That was, that was before I was even born. I was not born in 1997. I was born two years later. But I can't believe it's been 25 years since then. Wow. Right now, it's just a lot of birds. Princess Diana here. We will never forget where we were when we heard the news, like the assassination of John F. Kennedy or the 9-11 terrorist attacks. The death of Princess Diana was one of those occurrences that seemed to divide time itself into all the days before, when such a thing seemed impossible, and the days after, when we knew better. Oh wow, the debut of Harry Potter. Not in the movies. That was when they published the first ever book. Believe it or not, I was never- I, I, I like Harry Potter. But I never read the books before I ever saw the movies. I saw the first Harry Potter movie I ever watched was when I was 10. Half-Blood Prince. I'm trying to remember which one it was. And how that happened was that my dad just got tickets to an advanced screening of it. And he said, you want to go? I went, sure. And I was like, oh my god, this is cool. I had never read the books, though. Um, I always, Sometimes I like to ask my friends, and I'm going to ask you guys this now. Um, when it comes to a movie version of the book... Would you rather read the book or go to the movie? What, what's your kind of style? Uh, but anyway. After being pushed out of the company he founded, Steve Jobs returned triumphant to Apple. Okay. And, oh, this is really interesting. The founding of Google. Oh, this is, this, this is interesting. A Seattle entrepreneur named Jeff Bezos, who had been selling books online at Amazon.com since 1994, took his company public with shares priced at $18 each. On July 8th, 2021, the stock closed at a record high of 3 million, three, uh, sorry, I read that incorrectly, 3,000, I missed the decimal, but anyway, $3,734.41. If you bought back in 1997, congratulations. Right now, there's just pieces on, like, there's some pieces here on murder cases. Uh, I won't go through those. Oh, okay, Stuff We Love. Now, this is really cool, because this is something I don't talk a lot about on Nostalgia Talk, but, like, toys and stuff like that. Um, retail was getting a makeover, e-commerce e was heating up, and everyone was reading The Partner. So... I remember these Tatamagochis. Did anybody have- I don't know if I did. I might have. But did anybody have a Tatamagochi? I feel like that was one of those things that- I, I grew up in the 2000s. I was born in 99, but I mostly like grew up in the 2000s. And I feel as if Tatamagochis were still around, because I remember friends of mine had something like that. Maybe- maybe my memory's a little fuzzy. Purell hand sanitizer. Purell may have closed out 2021 amid widespread shortages and skyrocketing sales, for obvious reasons. 
But in 1997, when the hand sanitizer was first introduced to the general public, it had been a money loser for a decade for Ohio-based Gojo Industries. Luckily, Gojo's owner, owner, who started mixing batches back in the 40s in a washing machine, persisted long enough for, for Purell and the mantra, wash your hands, to catch on. Very true, actually. Beanie Babies before Bitcoin. At the height of Beanie Baby mania in the mid-90s, the stuffed animals were flying off shelves and selling for thousands of dollars on a secondary market. Collectors bet on getting rich. Yet even after the Beanie... <sighs> After the beanie bubble burst around 1999, affection for the toys remains. They were the subject of a 2021 HBO documentary. In 2022, Apple announced they would be the subject of a feature film starring Zach Galifianakis and Elizabeth Banks, and Saturday Night Live included them in a skit with Lizzo. I still have some beanie babies around here, actually. Teletubbies, ooh, yeah. I. We all remember the Teletubbies, Tinky Winky, Dipsy, Lala, and Poe. The four brightly colored, gibberish-speaking, antenna-bearing characters were born on the BBC in March of 1997 and were an instant hit with their preschooler audience. Within months, the adorable quartet had blown up in dozens of markets, to the dismay of parents across the globe, and even produced the number one song in England, Teletubbies Say, eh oh And there they are, our four little friends. Cute little guys they were. Palm Pilot, get organized. Alexa, Siri, and Palm Pilot, long before Amazon and Apple's personal digital assistants were offering nutrition tips and sending virtual hugs, Palm Computing had introduced the first generation handheld computer to synchronize your contacts and notes with your desktop. And then came 1997 and a blockbuster update called the Palm Pilot. The model, which was powered by two AAA batteries, sold more than 5 million units by 1999. The line was discontinued in 2011, for obvious reasons, because right now we've got what's called your iPhone. Heart Monitor. Stars who got hitched, or got close. Happy anniversaries to the couples who wrote it out, plus more milestones. So they've got here Barbara Streisand and James Brolin. Gwyneth Paltrow and Brad Pitt. Okay, there's a list here. Another one. Also married in 1997, Sylvester Stallone and Jennifer Flavin. The Rocky star and his model bride already had the first of their three daughters when they wed in London. Today, the grown-up girls say dad gives them dating tips. Let Sylvester Stallone do any of them involve boxing? Just wondering. Number two, Snoop Dogg and Shante Taylor. High school sweethearts in Long Beach, California, Snoop, born Calvin Brodus, and Shante, parents of three, nearly divorced in 2004, but renewed their vows in 2008. Admitted Snoop, she's always right. Number three, Angela Bassett and Courtney Vance. Classmates at the Yale School of Drama, the award-winning actors who have 16-year-old twins published a 2004 book about their union, Friends, A Love Story. Number four, Sarah Jessica Parker and Matthew Broderick. I do love Matthew Broderick. He's a really cool actor. To keep her wedding to Ferris Bueller on the down low, future Sex in the City fashion icon Carrie Bradshaw. It's initial here, S-A-T-C. I assume that stands for Sex in the City. Fashion icon Carrie Bradshaw wore a black off-the-rack dress. Parents to three, the actors co-starred in Plaza Suite on Broadway in 2022. And number five is Brooke Shields and Andre Agassi. When the Suddenly Susan star and the tennis champ solidified their love match in Monterey, California, a decoy bride was used to distract paparazzi. They split up two years later. And right here they're talking about celebrities born in 1997, so that would be, make them 25 years old. So Roseanne Park, Prince Michael Jackson Jr., Camilla Cabello, Simone Biles, her, Kylie Jenner, Naomi Osaka, there's a couple other people here, but that also, uh, another person born that year would happen to be one of my very best friends, Rachel. Uh, so Rachel, hope, hope you're enjoying being halfway to 50. <laughs> Deaths. A, a sad portion, but it is true. Jimmy Stewart. His favorite role was George Bailey, the small town banker of It's a Wonderful Life, which is fitting because Jimmy Stewart 
was never better than when playing decent, hardworking Americans like Bailey. Mother Teresa, Biggie Smalls, or Notorious B.I.G., and John Denver. Uh, I, I like John Denver. I feel like now listening to some John Denver, I have a John Denver thing on my phone. Oh, there's two more here. Michael Hutchins. And it ends with the one and only, and always very, very funny, Chris Farley. And this last picture, there's a little final picture in here of George Clooney from when he was doing Batman. You're 35 years old in front of a mirror in this outfit, and you go, uh-oh, what am I doing? This is a little quote here. Oh, yeah, he, he, he was doing Batman at the time. I thought I destroyed the franchise, he said. And on the back here, there's Princess Diana, Jennifer Lopez, who did uh, Selena in the film, and NSYNC, and I'll show that. So there we go. People Magazine uh, celebrating the 90s, 1997 edition. I hope you guys enjoyed. Hopefully I didn't bore you too much. You know, it was just me mostly just skimming through it, but hopefully you guys definitely enjoyed. And uh, so yeah, I will see you on the next Nostalgia Talk. Peace.